Okay, today we have a dash cam. It says it's a full HD car DVR, 1080p. Um, digital camcorder. There's no brand name on there, and they usually don't have them. Got this for about $20 online. And there was a deal, buy one, get one free. So I figured if, if one broke, it'd still be kind of useful, I guess. Um, the lens is an f2.0, um, focal distance, uh, minimal focal distance, I think, is 3.2 millimeters. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, let's take it apart and see what's going on. It's pretty junk, so we'll see. All right, let's see how to take this thing apart. Um, I see three, three exposed screws. Well, this screwdriver is too big. Almost. So, naturally, <laughs> um, I'm going with a, a size zero posi drive bit. I'm not sure why, but that fits better than the, the Philips Zero or Philips One. Whatever. Okay. And it's also very likely that the screw goes straight into plastic that's probably incredibly weak. So weak, in fact, that the screw might not even back out. And for $20 for a 1080p camera, yeah, they have to be making it for five bucks at most. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't don't forget I have uh, I have the other one, so I don't care about this. Okay. Well, those screws are loose; they're just not coming out. We got the tweezers. Could do a little convincing. Oh yeah. Look at that. Pulled out, pulled out some plastic with it. That's for that's for retention, don't worry. Okay. This one on the other hand is giving me a, a bit of a problem. Well, let's see. So it's starting to open up. Hopefully when I put some tension on this screw, it, it actually gets enough grip to be able to rotate. Yep. The threads were so loose that um, I had to put pressure on the screw to be able to back it out. So here we are, we're opening it up. I'm gonna see the incredible engineering that goes into this. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Yeah, I, I wonder if the sticker is really holding it together. Oh, maybe there's a screw under there. Oh, they're so, they're so tricky. See, that, that would prevent almost anyone from getting in here. Okay, here's the high quality lens mount system. Plastic using a soldering iron to melt the plastic. Um, oh, they use two screws, not four. They use two. That's um, you know, saving three cents is, is definitely important. Oh, actually, they were just saving the plastic. 
Look, there's no there's no mounting boss there, but there isn't just these two corners. That's funny. All right. Here's a dangerous battery with double-sided tape. Just this pull right off. Here's the image sensor with the lens. I doubt that that is glass. It's probably plastic. Let me go to the. I um one thing I might mention is this battery. As soon as I plugged it in for the first time, um, I plugged it in, went for a drive, and then um, unplugged it from the 12 volt cigarette lighter. And the thing shut off right away. So the battery doesn't hold any charge at all. To remove this board from the back housing. This actually has an LCD on the damn thing too. And apparently it has night mode. All it does is probably shift, shift the bits in software to increase the overall brightness of the image. Doesn't change the exposure or anything probably. It's magic night mode, just washing out all the colors. Okay, Let's see if it, oh yep, yeah, two screws on there too. Whoever would have thought these were actually metal, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I don't even know, it's like, uh, wow. I'm actually really surprised about that. That's, that's crazy. They actually have push buttons. Um, I'm pretty surprised about that actually. So we have the LCD. Oh, we have um, a, a chip on flex board, a flex PCB right here. That just goes straight to the LCD. Um, we have a bunch of foam for mechanical stability, SD, SD card slot, um, USD, USB mini um, receptacle, a QF, uh, QFP package, and an SOIC. The oscillator's not soldered down. It's gonna, it's gonna fly right off. Um, interesting. Looks like there may have been another option here. You see that there is a flat flex connector um, footprint here for it. I wonder if that's for testing or if they designed it to use a different LCD and then they picked the cheapest one at the time, that may be what they did to uh, to save cost. Whatever batch they were doing, they just chose the LCD that they could get for the cheapest at the moment, and just had the two different options. Um, that might be true, that might be the case. Alternatively, yeah. That's probably the case. It could also be a test connector for this, this image sensor. So let's take this tape off and uh, really strip it apart and, and go through some more details here. First, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. Okay, try not to puncture it. Last thing I want is to have a fire in my garage. Okay. It's connected with two wires, so there's no sensing going on. Get rid of that. Oh, this tape is nasty. 
like that foam tape that leaves a, a big residue. Oh, here's the speaker. They probably didn't know what speaker they were going to use, so they just strapped on the cheapest one they could find there, too. I don't know. It sounds pretty bad. All right. Yeah. So how is this? Oh. Interesting. The image sensor is actually a chip on flex. You see this flat flex? Uh, FPC, as you would call it, a flat printed circuit. Oh, this is the this is the big old heat sink for the sensor, but it's just stuck off of the surface of the board with double-sided tape for the worst thermal conduction possible. And that obviously had to do with they probably messed up the design and didn't get the right uh, focal distance. Or at least it didn't, it didn't line up mechanically unless they put that little spacer in. That's funny. I'm gonna rip this thing off. We're gonna, we're gonna take this sensor apart and see what's in it. Well, it's not a sensor, it's the, it's the, um, the image and optical assembly. Okay, here we go. We have the uh, the lens here. It's a fixed lens system. They're not doing any kind of uh, adjustment whatsoever. So hopefully the the F number on the lens was so the F it's F two point zero. So there's probably a lot of stuff that doesn't come in focus here. Really crap. Um, so we have an image sensor here. It is... So... This image sensor here is, is the actual... I don't know how it's showing up on the, on the camera itself. But the image sensor is the shiny, shiny part in the middle of of this glass package right here. The rest of it is called the ROIC with a readout integrated circuit. They actually take the, um, the image detector and convert it into a digital signal. Oh, this is nasty. I, I hate this foam stuff. Oh. Pull the LCD off. We have the LCD right here. It's a little plastic diffuser package, maybe? A reflector. Um, here, the, there are four LEDs for backlighting. Again, we have a chip on flex. We have some capacitors. Anode and cathode connection right here for the backlight. So they're probably connected in uh, series. Actually, no, probably not in series, probably in parallel. Um, okay. We have a plastic diffuser right here that has, uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but it has this little tiny dot pattern. So when the LEDs shine into the edge of this, the light bounces off all these little tiny dots and it's supposed to diffuse it, make it even. Um, then the rest of this is just standard LCD. Let's see what the layers we have here. Okay. All right, let's finish up this video.
processor is says it's a 24cc MQNV049. Doesn't mean anything to me, but I'll look it up after. So it obviously has an integrated SD card peripheral um, controller. It has USB. Okay. Yes, it actually does look like it has a USB connection that goes straight to the the microcontroller. The power from the USB goes through a diode. Well, they're actually putting protection on this damn thing. That's pretty funny. Or they're just, just stepping it down really cheaply. There's a voltage regulator, um, transistor. This is probably for switching something. Another five five pin um, sot. Let's see. That's that's probably also a regulator. They probably have a they probably have a supply for the backlight and then the, for the rest. This guy right here is probably a, a memory chip. PH25Q80B. Um, it's probably an I squared C or a, a spy bus um, EEPROM. And that's all there is to this. Oh, forgot to mention, there's, there's audio recording as well. It's a microphone that goes in. Ah, so this, this chip has to have a built-in analog to digital converter. I don't see it anywhere else. Huh. Unless one of the one of the five pin devices is an analog to digital converter. I suppose that's possible, but I don't think that's likely. Um that's it. They're probably using one transistor to drive the speaker straight from the microcontroller. There's some LEDs for indication. That's that's all there is to this, guys. It's pretty, um, no matter how bad the quality is, I'm still pretty amazed that they can sell it for that price. I mean, bottom line is I couldn't and wouldn't design something for that price. Inherently, you can't make something that's really, really good. Well, the, the quality of the materials can't be fantastic. The design can be good. The design looks okay. So, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on other little things I can do, just let me know. Hope everyone's doing well. Talk to you later. Bye.